and in development, everyone is always looking for the next big thing, mm -hmm. from social marketing to social franchising. What is next? I think there's some interesting things happening with um, what might be called pay for performance schemes or development impact bonds, social impact bonds, unconventional financing, let's mm -hmm. call it that, for global health outcomes. Um, we've been very interested by the work that uh, a lot of other organizations are doing in trying to mobilize uh, streams of private resources that are interested in a social outcome. Mm -hmm and marry them up to a measurable, in our case, health impact on the ground. This is an area that gets a lot of ink, but hasn't really had a lot of experience mm -hmm. yet that's demonstrable. But we think it's a promising way in a time when budgets are flat or declining, when public resources for the global health progress that we've seen is at risk. So how do we mobilize new sources of capital to sustain what we think is a necessary subsidy if we're going to keep growing the health outcomes mm. in the developing world. Mm. And I think we have to look at unconventional funding sources like development impact bonds, social impact bonds, things like that. Mm. But are those innovative finance models mostly useful for products? Or are they also useful for strengthening a health system, which is what in our survey, Best mm -hmm. Buyers in Global Health, that we did together with you guys, mm -hmm. uh, what was one of the major uh, conclusions there. Health experts around the world say, yeah. rather than innovation, we need to fund health systems. But I think that's one of our big challenges, right? We, we agree that the health system, and broadly defined, not just public sector, private sector, all the actors in the health system, that all needs, needs strengthening. But anyone who's been a witness to the progress in global health over the last decade, mm. certainly, knows that we face this high and growing expectation of measurability and uh, accountability and attribution for all of the investments that go into it. So you're right, you know, a, an innovative financing scheme, for example, to support a particular service or a particular product might be easily measured. That what we all agree is a necessary uh, effort to lift the overall health system is much harder to measure. Mm. And I think there's a challenge that we haven't yet fully unpacked yet. Uh, and I think DevEx can help us think about that problem. Mm. It's great to recognize that strengthening the health system is a best buy in global health. How do we go about measuring that mm -hmm. and attributing the impact of different funding sources into that in order to sustain the political commitment necessary for public funds. And do we have the coordinating mechanisms out there already in order for, for all these different players to come together and not create two health systems next to each other? Oh, I think so. I mean, in the best of circumstances, of course, the national government is playing that coordinating role. And e in our case, even when we're working to strengthen the private sector, I mean, we're fundamentally, we're working for the national government to ensure that it has a higher performing national health system. but. That, that applies across the entire spectrum of development interventions. If you have a national government that knows what it wants, that is directing the resources of partners, funders, donors, agencies, implementing partners such as us in a clear strategic way, well, that's fantastic, but it's rare. So I would say that, that sort of coordination, that finding the right balance between vertical and horizontal should happen at the national level should be driven by the National Ministry of Health or the national authorities in place. It doesn't happen often enough. So then when that fails, then you fall back to the need for better donor coordination. Which donor takes the lead? Does the World Bank take the lead? Everyone has their own particular bias and you know, sort of prism through which they look at the problem. Mm. Uh, you know, there, there are some great examples of where strong national leadership has allowed really fantastic global health progress, public health progress. You can cite the case of Rwanda, for example, in Africa. Um, I think there are other trade-offs inherent in that sort of strong leadership, but it, the, the global health progress is really undeniable. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the exceptions rather than the rule. Okay, well, we'll need to follow this much more closely, and thanks so much for yeah. being with us. Thank you, Rolf.